Hello, my name is Camille and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be explaining the color balance adjustment layer in Adobe Photoshop. Just like last week, I was explaining the brightness contrast adjustment by turning it into colors by using a very clever script that I have written in Adobe Photoshop. This week, we're going to step it up a notch because with brightness contrast, we're working with the RGB luminance curve in order to brighten or darken the image and in this way also increase or decrease the contrast. But right now, if you want to introduce some color shifts in the image, we actually need to work individually with red, green and blue channels. We are going to be reasoning about the effects that the color balance adjustment is doing to our image by analyzing the curves that our script is producing. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so right here we are in Adobe Photoshop and we will be working on the image of the Skogafoss waterfall in Iceland, just like last week with the brightness contrast adjustment. And by the way, if you haven't watched my video from a week ago about the brightness contrast adjustment, I can highly recommend you watch it right now. The link is up here and also in the description of this video, because in that video I explain how this script to convert a different adjustment layer into the curves adjustment actually works. So I'm not gonna explain it again. If you are interested in knowing how the script actually works under the hood, refer to the video from a week ago in which I explain exactly how the script work so let's start with adding a color balance adjustment it is right here and now as you can see we have the three main parts in the properties window we have the tone selection so we can select shadows midtones or highlights then we have the three sliders cyan red magenta green yellow blue and then we have the preserve luminosity checkbox and if we take a look at those sliders on the right side we have red green and blue hmm red green and blue coincidence not at all because as the intuition might tell you already, the curves, the red, green and blue curves that we are going to be adjusting are definitely related to those three sliders. The first slider, the cyan red, is going to be taking care of the red curve. The second slider, the magenta green, is going to be taking care of the green curve. And the yellow blue slider right here on the color balance is going to be reflected in the blue curve. But what are the shapes of those curves exactly? Well, let's run some examples, shall we? So for instance, let's leave the tone selection at midtones and let's slide the yellow blue slider to the right and add some blue for instance 50 on the plus side right here and then as we can see we have added a lot of blues into our image mostly here on the bottom on those rocks and if we are interested on how the curve actually works for this adjustment let's just keep the color balance selected and again go to file scripts and right here we have the convert to curves updated script. So if I click on that, by the way, if you would like to play with this script yourself, you can actually download it for completely free, no strings attached. You don't even need to subscribe to my YouTube channel, although I would definitely appreciate if you did. Just head over to the description of this video and there you will find two links. One link will be to the file of the script itself and the second link will be the link to the readme. So in that readme I exactly explain where to put the script file in order to it to show up in the context menu of your Photoshop. So I can highly encourage you to at least play around with this script because the results are very educative about how different adjustment layers actually work in Photoshop under the hood and then you can use this experience in your real life photo editing because you can know what the some adjustment Layer is actually enough to edit your photo and if you're not completely satisfied with how this adjustment is actually affecting your photo you can just convert it to curves using my script and then work on the curve and tweak the little details in order to get the desired effect so the script is done and as we can see if we toggle through the channels we can see that on the red channel we didn't change anything we have the diagonal curve that is angled at 45 degrees and this is again the identity transformation this is the curve that does nothing I actually have a separate video explaining how the curves actually work in Photoshop and also I can highly recommend if you didn't watch this video yet, the link is up here and also in the description, I explain all the science and all the math behind curves. And for now what you need to know is that this diagonal line in the curves is the identity transformation which doesn't affect our image at all. So on the red channel we do nothing, on the green channel we also do nothing, but on the blue we can see that the curve is tilted upwards. It is a convex curve that meets the diagonal here at the pure whites and here at the pure blacks. And what it actually does, it is just here around the midtones, it is adding blue to our image. So we are adding blue in the blue curve, but we are not touching the red or green curve. So let's see what happens if we check the preserve luminosity checkbox, shall we? So let's disable that for now, but let's not delete it. Let's select the color balance again, because again for the script, the appropriate layer needs to be selected. And now let's check the preserve luminosity. 
So, as we can see, the image is getting a little bit darker. So let's run the script again and let's compare the results in curves and let's see what the preserved luminosity is actually doing. If we take a look at the result, on the blue channel we are basically doing the same thing but a little bit less. This is what it was doing without the preserved luminosity. So as you can see this curve is way above this diagonal, more above than here. So with preserved luminosity the adjustment is less aggressive in the blue channel but also on the green and on the red we are sort of adding a reversed curve. It is symmetrical with regards to this diagonal. So what we are doing is that without the preserved luminosity we are just brightening the blue channel but we are leaving the red and green channel as it were. So in effect we are actually brightening the image. So in order to preserve the luminosity, which is the luminosity is the same thing as brightness basically, we need to tone down the other curves a little bit in order to compensate for the increased brightness in the blue channel. So we are increasing the blue but also proportionally we are decreasing the red and green in order to preserve luminosity. So now let's disable this curve again. Let's go back to the color balance. So now let's see what happens if we switch the tone from midtones to shadow. So let's reset that to defaults. Zero and uncheck the preserved luminosity. Now let's switch the midtones to shadows and again let's apply 50 to the blues. And now let's run the script again. So this is the curve as a result of the blue adjustment in the shadows. We can switch to red, we can see nothing happens here, nothing in the red. And in the blue the adjustment is less extreme than with the midtones. With the midtones we are sort of separating this curve from this diagonal a little bit more so if you are targeting the shadows, the values of the curve around the midtones lay closer to the diagonal and again if they were lying on the diagonal there would be no effect. So the closer the value of the curve is to the diagonal, the lesser the effect of this adjustment is on the image. And now let's see what happens if we switch from the shadows adjustment to highlights adjustment. So again let's reset that to zero. Let's switch from shadows to highlights and let's put 50 here again. And right now, as you can see, the entire image along with the sky is getting a lot more bluer. So let's actually examine how the curve in this situation looks. Let's run the script again. And now look what happens. Again, we didn't have the preserved luminosity selected, so we are probably not touching the red curve correct. We are not touching the green curve also correct, but what happens on the blue curve? We are basically going to the extremes with the shadows here around this tone. We are basically clipping the blue curve to the maximum amount that we can put into the blue channel. So the result of that is a lot of blue cast in the highlight area here in the sky. And as you can see this curve is just an extreme case of the midtones curve because again it starts right here. It's not like this curve is affecting only the highlights. As you can see the entire curve is affecting the entire spectrum of tones. So it may be a common misconception that if you target only shadows in the color balance adjustment that only the shadows will be adjusted. No, it's not true. And also if you select only highlights that only the highlights will be selected. It's not true. It is sort of biased more towards the highlights or the shadows but the entire tonal range of the image is affected. And again, judging by those curves, you can see what exactly is the adjustment that the color balance adjustment is performing on our image. The other important takeaway is that what the preserved luminosity checkbox is doing, when it's checked, it basically adds a sort of reversed curve to the other channels. And of course, if I were to adjust all of the free sliders, we would get a combination of this effect on the curve. So I'm not going to do that because for the educational purposes, it is way better to just adjust one slider and reason about the all three curves that we would get from this kind of adjustment. So again, if you're not completely satisfied with how the color balance is affecting your image, what you can do is you can do the adjustment in color balance that you want, then you can convert it to curves using my script, you can download the script from the links in the description and then you can tweak it further right inside the curves adjustment. Pretty handy, pretty cool and pretty awesome knowledge to have really. So uh, yeah, that's it basically for this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to hit the like button down below, it really helps me out. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will definitely be more videos like this in the future. I actually upload pretty much every single week some kind of tutorial or something like this on YouTube. I cover filmmaking, photography, drone flying tutorials, basically everything revolves around things you can do with your camera. So definitely consider subscribing. But like I said, that's it for now. Have a good day, see you next time and bye bye.